Creators Game, episode 14. I'm Daya Miller. Jay Smith. Alicia Smith Longboat. Stacy Smith. And this is the Creators Game podcast, and we're going to get right into asking uh, all these great questions because uh, we only have you guys here for a limited amount of time. Uh, we're supposed to have a whole bunch of people, but now we have two guests, and we're going to focus on you guys now. Are you guys prepared? You guys look nervous. <laughs> a little bit a little nervous. Bit nervous so, yeah. so those are people, 11 people, all those questions are now going to fall on you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <great. laughs> All right, so let's let's start at the very beginning. What's the first time? When's the first time that you've seen a lacrosse stick? Not touched one or even played one, but just seen lacrosse. Um, for me, I was probably, you know, five, six, like that I can remember. Um, my dad played. I have um, a lot of family. I grew up watching playing, like the Wolves, and you know, come from the Squire Smith family, so that was very popular in, in my family. And what about yourself? Um, I don't remember. It's always just been a part of my life, so I can't like say when the first time I actually seen one is. But um, my grandpa, he used to net like a lot of the sticks back in the day, so everyone would be bringing his sticks to him to do up. So that's probably my earliest memory of seeing one. And uh, when did you guys first like start playing, I guess? Or, or and who, who also introduced you to playing? Because, you know, it's one thing to see like lacrosse being played, but then who's like the first person to give you a stick and be like, no, no, come play with us? Uh, well, for me, I, uh, my sisters played. I have an older sister, Lindsay, and my younger sister, Becky. Um, they start playing, and I kind of was just watching all the time. And my dad was um, sick, and he had wanted us three to play together. Um, unfortunately, he didn't get to see that, but that's why I came out. They were like, come out and play. Let's just, you know, see how it goes. My little sister was like, oh, no, you, you better not. You're too, you're too small. Like, <laughs> she was afraid for me, but she's like, you know, you're, you're pretty scrappy in the corner. Like, you know, she was, she, we were happy. We won that year in honor of my dad. And that's when we started wearing his number. So he's number six. Um, so Lindsay was six. I became 16. And Becker's was always 66. So that's just... When I start playing, I think I was 25 when he passed away. Okay, so it was like later on in life. Late, late in the game for me, yeah. Well, what about like, um, what about just like shooting around around the house and stuff like that? Uh, was just, it ever just like someone just said, "Hey, come, come play catch with me"? Yeah, backyard stuff. My sisters would be playing catch, and you know, like I would get in there. I wasn't the greatest, but it looked fun. What one. about what about yourself? Um, I started playing when I was 15. Uh, field lacrosse that's where I started my um, lacrosse career I guess um, it wasn't it was um, kind of just getting started around here I think and uh, so they only had the U20 team and I waited until I, I think they just started the U15 team and I didn't want to play on that team because the only reason like why I started playing was because my sister was playing and I wanted to play with her so I waited until I was like 15 to start playing and I played field lacrosse for most of like my lacrosse career, I think I like played here in their box when it first started, like the four teams that we had down here, um, the women's league, and like all four teams, basically like Six Nations women playing against each other. So I played in that league um, for a couple of years, and then like I came to the attack. I think for maybe two or three years while I was still playing field, and then probably I want to say. 2018 was when I came back to the attack and I've been playing box since like consistently since then what would you guys say is like the biggest difference like uh, did you and you played field as well right or never no? played field no I started with the attack with my sister so I've always just played box well what would you say is like the biggest difference then since you played both uh, contact for one <laughs> um when I like when I played there wasn't as much um like contact as there is now, I think you see a little bit more contact in the game, the women's field game now than you did back then. But um, I think that's a big um, difference. Um, I think you have to be um, a little bit more quicker in the field game, and uh, like in the sticks, obviously no equipment, no pockets in the sticks. So uh, who would you say is some of the players, like uh, um, male or female, that you look up to uh, like right now, like in lacrosse? whether it be field or box? Um, 
I think me in high school, it was Sid Smith, you know, her younger brother, great defensive person. When I first started, I didn't have great hands. And um, Daryl Squire was our coach. And in old school, right, up, down, and off. Um, because I couldn't really carry the ball or handle it very well. Um, and my little sister, she wasn't the fastest on getting back is when he started letting her come off and me go back door. And so I kind of just really focused on um, defense. So watching Sid and, you know, growing up, like I think in the NLL and everything, he was just a great player. Sid's, Sid's influenced a lot of players. Even uh, like in our training camp, like um, Randy would always reference him. You know, he's like, Sid Smith always had him backpedaling, you know, and I was just like, yeah, that's what, what you strive to do, right? Like mm -hmm. that's what kind of player you want to be. Who were some of the players that you played against, like, uh, in the tournament that you guys were just at? Like, who were some of the players on the other teams that you were kind of like, ooh, like, I'm kind of excited to play against, and then also at the same time that you're like, ooh, like, I've seen them play, and i got to keep my eye on them. Was there any standout players? And is, is there any standout players within, like, um, um, Women's Box League that, like, you know, who, like, who's the top-notch person, I guess you would say? Um, Has anyone solidified that? On for me, it, it's it's my teammates. You know, Miquan, uh, Deanne Patton. They're my top notch players for me. Um, as far as other teams, like um, I wasn't really worried. I guess I was just out there to play and do my job. Right, shut them down, whatever. So, but the girls that did stand out in WMSO were um, Katie Desnew, I Erica think Evans. Erica Evans. They play for Team Canada. So, but yeah, my top players are my teammates. Yeah. Um, there was a topic that you were talking about with Team Canada, mm -hmm. where uh, I guess basically they had um, kind of washed another team. At, what they were up by, like thirty or twenty or something. Well, it was. It, what you guys, you girls were away playing, and I had I had uh, caught clips of this game and that game, and and, it, and in all honesty, it pissed me off to see the Team Canada women's playing Japan. Japan wasn't even in the tournament, in a scrimmage. Mm. and beating them 30 to nothing. That does not grow. The, I don't care what anybody says. I said it. I'm saying it again. That does not grow the game. It doesn't. So when I saw U.S. beat them, I was pretty happy about that. Mm -hmm. In my opinion only, there was a bit of arrogance with that team to the point where they didn't even practice as a team, fully as a team, until they got to Utica. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it's just, I mean, I've been in arguments on social media about it. There's, that is not, that does not grow the game. Spending a half an hour before a game trying to teach another team or a half an hour after is not growing the game, in my opinion. That does not do a thing. How do we know these teams really want to come back now after getting beat by 30 goals? Right. Like, if you're going to grow the game, make it competitive. If, if, if you're just out there to, you could have stayed home and played a, a pickup, a pickup league team. And beat them like that. Mm -hmm. To me, there was it was pointless. Well, I think I feel like Haudenosaunee had something to do with you know Canada losing because we <laughs> we played them in the semi and we really took it to them. So <laughs> well, you know USA should give us a shout out. Kudos, kudos <laughs> to you, to you ladies. It um, much pride though. You you were a part of a team who were the first women to win a medal at an indoor box world championship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am very humbled to have you guys sitting here. And actually, in field too. Yeah. Like yeah. Not, there's not been any women's team for like the Hood and Shoni that's won a medal, Sweet. or has made it to a semifinal game. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, I'm extra proud because they're family. I, I I heard the Smith <laughs> last name in there. I was like, oh, another yeah. plug. That oh Smith, yeah. That Smith last name's getting filthy. in there. Filthy. Filthy. It's, it's getting in there. It's getting in there. Yeah. Yeah. I must say they're a little more humble with their answers than I usually would be, but. I, no, it's a lot of pride, a lot of family pride, a lot of community pride, and it's very humbling to have you guys sitting here. You girls sitting here, like, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having yeah, us. Thanks for having us. You guys ain't done yet. You guys no. <laughs> back, back to the hard stuff. Yeah, yeah, back, back to the hard stuff. No, no, it's going to be all fun. Um, so what about, like, um, when you were out there, okay, so let's go back to the tournament. You guys are out there. What were what some of the things that went right and some of the things that went wrong? Um, going into the USA game, I, I feel like I wish we would have played somebody else first, kind of just got those jitters out of the way. And then we were, you know, kind of regroup because we did have to, um, look at our game and adjust, um, our defense, you know, had to 
run our run our defense like there were some of us like that weren't some of us that was and then just like even the offense like I think a lot of nerves came into play it was very overwhelming um we haven't really played with like music playing constantly throughout the game there's a lot of people it was just new for us and I think that um if we could do it over I I would uh like to play somebody else first just to get that out of the way is that a hard thing to play with music? Because, like, I play music at, at the games, but, like, not when people are, like, actual playing. So, like, is that something they were doing, like, playing, uh, like, music throughout like, the whole game? Like the NLL. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I would feel like it would be kind of hard to hear my uh, my teammates. It could be yelling at me. It, it, it could was, be like, hey, pass me the ball or something like that. It was hard to hear on defense, you know, like, we're trying to talk to each other. And then maybe some the girls that were down low the girls that were playing high, we couldn't hear, you know, like our goalies are yelling, like pretty much losing their voices. And we're just like, oh, no, we didn't hear that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it probably would be, you know, people calling out picks, when to slide, help, stuff like that. It would yeah. Be, Plus it would the be coaches hard, yelling. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Everyone. Yeah. It was hard. But a lot of things that went right is that, um, you know, we refocused and regrouped and got to watch game films and stuff like that and then just becoming closer as a team like we started gelling we we started trusting each other on defense like it just like all came together I feel throughout the whole tournament who was like one of the top scorers like throughout the tournament that you were like the team was kind of like not depending on but who was one of the top scorers I don't think we had just one main girl. I think there was kind of like a handful of them. If one wasn't having a ga good game, there was another one like Ava Gabriel. She stepped up, got five goals one game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Tristan Burns, she opened the tournament with a couple goals against USA. Then you have Farrah Blackbird. That's just like, you know, amazing. Um, down low, uh, Mackenzie Shaguaja. You had J.D. Burns and uh, uh, Talis Tart. Tarbell like you had all the young girls stepping up and kind of just like um making us all proud you know what I mean like they all had took turns I guess mm -hmm. and scoring goals yeah I just thought of a question it happens every so often you know? <laughs> every so often <laughs> every so often it happens on that the young girls stepped up how, how did you guys feel about playing against other teams who had girls that maybe weren't even old enough to be at a women's tournament yet um I didn't feel like in some type of way, you know what I mean? Like we, I think we were just happy that we were there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And be able to and like, we could keep compete up with, with them. them. Yeah. Like, well, well, like half our age, like I think most of like a lot of the people, the girls that were on our team, like same age as my kids. Like, so it was like playing with like girls 20 years younger. So well, that speaks volumes that you that you are still able to, to to make make a squad like that. But I know, for example, I don't know the age, the average age of these teams, but I do know that Team Canada took a young squad, and I get mm -hmm. it. They're preparing for the future. Mm -hmm. I get that. But how do you celebrate a winning a medal and you're not old enough to drink? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's what. Um, well, that was my thing too. Like how many how many um girls on both team canada and usa are even over 30 yeah. like because even that's old like kind of old to be playing still like and like i give a lot of credit to the girls on our team because like their mothers they're mm -hmm. like they got other responsibilities mm -hmm. they work you know like they got mm -hmm. full-time jobs and like when you're younger like that, you can just focus on the cross. You don't have all those responsibilities to have to, like, figure out and, like, who's watching the kids while I go here. Like, oh, mm -hmm. we got practice this weekend. Who's watching the kids? Like, mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, so there's that. <laughs> that actually leads to one of my, one of my, one of my big questions was, like, um, how was it actually, um, you know, getting everyone in one room together for practice or getting everyone to show up for a practice because again you guys have responsibilities you got work you got kids you can, school so many different things like how hard was it getting everyone together because um even for like the rivermen warriors um you know chiefs things like that like uh those players like for guys guys have it a little bit easier guys can kind of walk away from their kids a little bit for that hour hour no 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 walk away hey hey, hey. i meant for that hour and a half they can be went, like hey i got something to do went to and get then, went to get milk yeah or, or like yeah i went to go get milk i just need my pads and clothes with me that's all like but mm -hmm. but for like uh, women like you, like you can't do that it's it's so much harder so like what were some of the barriers 
that you guys had to overcome and not only that like yeah like how hard was it to actually get everyone together it was pretty easy i think for yeah. most practices there was like everyone was there everyone made sure they got there i think a couple times like the girls in school couldn't make it but like for the most part every one was there and i think like jason the coaches kind of said like from the start like you got to commit to this and this is where you're supposed to be no matter what and like make sure you got all your like support in place for like when you come to practices so I guess like a lot of us are lucky that we do have that support at home where we could leave our kids for like what was it once a month every week yeah like for the last year once a month one weekend we'd go and have like three practices in the weekend so like yeah just like a lot so of support at home how was it playing for Jason and Randy and Matt? I enjoyed they, it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Like they um, were they were tough, but like I thought it would have been harder yeah. to be honest. Like I guess the tryout process was kind of lengthy, you know what I mean? They didn't pick the team until March. Yeah, I think March. Or so and we started back in the end of August, I think we started. So um you were still trying. Mm -hmm. You want it to be there. You want it to show up. You want it to show them that you were committed. And the, like the planning, like she said, it was once a month. So we knew when it was coming. Mm -hmm. You made arrangements and you, you, you went and got it done. <coughs> so like in the mornings we would have um, noon till two. You get lunch and then you're practicing again six to eight. And then again Sunday, 10 till noon, and then you drive home. And then in between those times, we would, we would um, do camps for kids, like girls that are on the like area. They would come mm -hmm. out, and we would run camps and kind of like get, just give back, I guess. Well, I so only, we were busy. I only ask because I've, I've, um, I consider Jason one of my mentors. Mm -hmm. um, we're the same age, but um, he showed me a lot of things from a coaching standpoint. I've got to... Uh, I was with the uh, Winter League, Aero Express Winter League for the first 10 years. Yeah. So he was my go-to on everything. Um, I've never coached with Randy. Uh, my, my boys I've had a, uh, that I've played for him, they say he's a hard ass, but he's a good coach too. Mm -hmm. And he's understanding if you have an issue. Yeah. And um, I've coached with Matt before. Um, that those three guys on the bench is a wealth of knowledge. And then Jeff was the GM, right? Yeah. I worked with Jeff along with the Rivermen as well. Yeah. So... There was a lot of knowledge on there. For sure. And for us, like in the women's league, we don't have committed coaches like that. So to have, you know, these group of men with so much knowledge show up for us, we wanted to show up for them. Mm -hmm. So it was just, it was a, a respect thing. And I think that it made it a lot easier because you just want to learn and take it all in. Well, yeah. I can tell you, I'm, I'm scared to, them to coach. Because they had to coach women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm scared to coach the women's team. Like, <laughs> I've been asked a couple of times. I don't want to yell. I don't know. Yell back. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, it could get feisty in there. And be like, yeah, you got to show up for practice. Like, don't tell me what to do. My kids need me at this time. I'm going to be there. Just, you know, you don't, you don't be arguing. <laughs> no, it's it, I, it was a running joke. I had coached um, one game, uh, midget girls team years ago. And um, there was, admittedly, I'm not saying this is how it is now, but back then on that particular evening, there was a lot of cattiness on the bench. I couldn't really say anything. Couldn't go in the dressing room and yell at them, stuff like that. Like those are the barriers from a, from a from a male coach's perspective. I can't go in the dressing room. Ways are getting dressed to yell at you, or tell you this is what we're going to do and stuff. Those are small barriers. I get it. They're easily overcome. But at that time, I walked in there, didn't know any of these girls. The coach had been suspended. They asked me to fill in. Um, I had noticed one girl on on uh, on the offensive side was waving at a boy in the crowd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm done at defensive end trying to tell him this is what I want you to do. And there's a girl waving at the same boy in the crowd. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just going to stand back. Yeah, definitely. It gets a little <clears throat> bit different when it comes to the women, you know, like we're there to play, you know, I, I, I get it. There's young girls and that happens. But like yeah. I said, it's hard for um, us girls to find coaching. So like, that's my goal later on after this mm -hmm. is hopefully I can give back to the younger girls coming up and be there for them. Cause what really we want is just somebody to be committed, someone to show up for us, you know, who was the coach this past summer? For a tag, yeah. Ron, Ron, Elijah. I've, I've coached with Ron yeah. too. Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, not taking anything away from him either. Uh, coached with him, coached against him. Um, in the Team Iroquois minor program, I coached with him a lot. Uh, well, used to. Um, 
I haven't really seen him in a, in a long time. I had the privilege of having his son, Greg, on the Rivermen this year. Mm-hmm. So I got to see him in BC. But um, I have to say it, I've, I've, I've talked to a few, a few people and WMSL has been thrown at me twice. So I'm considering yeah, he, it. He drives from Oneida. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All yeah. the way in for practices. So mm-hmm. like we have really appreciated him the last two seasons. Um, it's It's been great. So like we're just trying to keep building from mm-hmm. there, right? Oh, he's 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 dedicated. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I know that for sure. Mm-hmm. What would you guys say that you uh, like you would need from the community to have like more support to maybe have like more more uh, women come out or to have like even just the. Yeah, just to have the support, even if it be financially or like uh, sometimes it'll be just like, oh, we need a floor time. There's so many teams out there. There's not enough floor time. So like what is what is some of the support that Six Nations could provide for you guys? Um, for us, I would I feel like the most important thing would be financial. Um, there's a lot of mothers that want to play but can't because mm-hmm. they can't afford the extra, you know, 200 whatever dollars for registration. We don't have um, sponsors like that. As women, we have to either pay for it ourselves or we fundraise. So mm-hmm. like that for us, we pay for our own floor time. Like we don't get paid to play. We just go out there because we love the game. So yeah. I think that would be one thing that would be helpful for us is um, getting a sponsor. I put in a team in the WALL a couple of years ago in honor of my sister and um, mm-hmm. I got the whole team sponsored and I felt great about that because they, all they had to do was come out and play, you know, and they were grateful. So I feel like that would be one of our biggest things. What about like uh, the younger generations as well? Like uh, even like, I don't know how it works for like the minors, minor system for. Um, There's like, three, I think three girls divisions. So like, um, like is it as, I guess it's not as large as, you know, like uh, the boys and men's mm. division, but like uh, what, what type of support would they need? Would it just always be financial or? I well, think for the U22 girls, because they're they're just like, you know, they're out of high school. They don't have like jobs. Some don't have jobs, but they want to play. And I know my younger sister, Kiana, she's the goalie and she fundraises for her teammates mm-hmm. so that they can play, you know, just so that they could have a team. I think the U17 and U15 team are definitely building. They they have a larger team and, and it's, it's nice to see that growing. Mm-hmm. But for that U22 and then the seniors, I think that financial would be the best help for them. So they fall under the minor, Six Nations minor lacrosse umbrella, which I know this won't hit the air tonight, but the Six Nations minor lacrosse AGM is tonight. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, they would fall under, even the U22 team would fall under minor, the minor lacrosse banner. And their floor time is booked separate. I, I, I don't know how it is in the last couple of years, but when I was on the minor lacrosse board, we would book the girls' practices all on one night. Um, to me, I was just like, okay, they're they're kept separate, but they're still under the same umbrella, which in the beginning of stages was was fine. There's There's whole separate girls' tournaments and everything. Um, but it is for us, it's growing other, other centers. I've seen the, the girls divisions fold. The problem is, is that like, um, like, you know how there's like, you said there's other tournaments or there's other days. You just got to have like, um, the women's team play with the same day as the men's, because like, if you have like a women's tournament, um, you know, like you're not going to get the same audience. You just want to be able to have like more people mm-hmm. go up to the games, right? So if you just have like the women's tournament, you're only going to have people who are only want to see the women players play and go to that mm-hmm. tournament. But if you just have the women and the men in the exact same day, everyone's going to co- come and watch lacrosse. I think the only time that happens is provincials, right? Yeah. Where everybody's on, in the same 10 days. But um, mm-hmm. I, I get what you're saying 100%. And um, I've seen, I've, I've been to my girls' minor games. I've, I've been to WMSL games, and they don't get the same crowd. They don't, legitimately. But, yeah, but like, that's what I'm saying is it needs to get to that point where, like, you guys do get the same crowd. And, like, uh, even, um, like, um, I've seen the arena in Utica look beautiful. Like, mm-hmm. how, how was it playing out there? Like, I bet you that was amazing. That looked like a great arena. Uh, we got to go out last year for the Laxani tournament, so that was our first time out seeing like the facility and everything. Um, I feel like that was kind of a blessing for us because we then we got to like kind of kind of just take it in. I think if we were just to go out there and not know, it would have been a little bit different for us. Um, but it's a great facility, lot of lot of rinks. Um, 
mine and all. How about that arena yeah. in Oneida out there? A beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. That yeah. whole place is so beautiful. Yeah, that's something that I wish we could have here. And that that was at the was it Standing Stone. It's Oneida. Oneida. Community Center. Is it? Yeah. Mary, okay. Mary Winder. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm thinking the casino because I saw that in one of the one of the one of the commercial it's, breaks. It's near there. And that yeah. casino yeah. was not like that. The only time I've ever been there, I was like, <laughs> they've no, added like it's beautiful a, a billion now, dollars too. in the buildings to it. <laughs> but they they had a great facility. It was um, they had a track above their um, floor, and then they had a swimming pool, basketball court, and and a gym all nice. in the same. And it's free to their community members. So I thought that was amazing. Do you really think that'll happen here? Here, I, I would hope so. But I mean, there's been a lot of rumblings about a swimming pool, but <laughs> oh yeah, you know, on Facebook, getting getting everyone up in a up in a roar oh, about the swimming oh. pool. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's neither here nor there. But I, I get you, I get the the pain that you feel on floor time, and I I gotta say it. Um, there's upwards of twenty five minor teams. That includes the girls, mm -hmm. but um the women's senior team is a lot of times forgotten left out when people mm -hmm. are talking about floor time mm -hmm. i know for um for the rivermen they've had practices wednesday nights in hagersville for years mm -hmm. um i don't know whether that'll ever change because we used to actually share floor time with you yeah. in hagersville yeah. um this year we had to do it all on our own so we got stuck with friday nights which was kind of hard yeah. you know because everybody's busy but um we normally have to go Hagersville, Caledonia, mm -hmm. like off reserve because we don't, and that would be something nice for us to have like a home somewhere where we can hang our banners. Like I've won many championships in the last 12 years with the attack, but there's no place to hang our banners. We I don't have you. a home. That's very true. Like they didn't, they've never um, hung them up in a Schwiegen or ILA or really? No. Well, at the Six Nations Sports and Memorial Cultural Center, that's a long word, or long few words. A Schwiegen. Um, a Schwiegen arena. Minor lacrosse is there, and us, Rivermen. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, ILA, minor lacrosse is there at the beginning. Tryouts, mm -hmm. because the ice is still in over here. Right. But um, the only weekend games that I know of are the Confederacy Challenge that minor lacrosse has early May. Yeah. And our home games. And that's it. But you guys have a schedule that is tournament style, right? Yeah. One weekend yeah. per month. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I don't want to bump us, I, but I'm. You guys should look into having a weekend there. I think we they did it at the ILA once. Yeah. Um, this past season we got to host one mm -hmm. day, so that was nice. Well, when I was with the senior C program, as soon as we had our our uh, scheduling meeting, right off the hop, I said we want to host one weekend and we want to host a championship mm -hmm. every year. Put it out there. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to host last year, and then there was a, hy a hydro issue. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so we had to have it in Brampton. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I feel your pains on that. Mm -hmm. It's even difficult in the Senior C program with an, a new team. Where, where are we going to play out of? Luckily, right. we had the same style of schedule, so we didn't actually have a home game. Mm. But, um, yeah, I, I feel your pain. I know that Minor Cross and Rivermen are the only, team, only organizations in there during the summer. Right. Again, there were supposed to be like 11 of you. So I was going to ask each individual, uh, individually um, these questions, but I'll just go with you two. And yeah, you can actually answer for everyone. So I want to know, who was the funniest on the team in the dressing room? I would I say was, Kendall. Yeah, Kenny girl. Yeah. She and was our was hype she? girl. She was dancing. We had our uh, theme was our theme song was uh, Kalija, <laughs> so we'd play that before every game, and she'd be dancing in the dressing room, trying to get everybody else to dance. Yeah. <laughs> so she was our hype girl in the dressing room. Who is someone that you wouldn't want to talk to before the game? Like they need to focus. Chow. Yeah, I was gonna say Chow. Goalies. Too. Okay, the goalies got to be focused. Okay. Yeah. Who is the person that turned on the music? Kenley. Kenley. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who is likely to get in a scrap? Farah. Yeah. Are you going to say me? Or Bina. <laughs> Bina, yeah. yeah. Okay. You guys always ain't on the same team, right? Sometimes you might have to play each other. Like, I don't know, like... Uh, Not us. No? No. Not us, but like some of the other girls, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, who is someone on the team that you would not want to go up against? Like, often, uh, I guess an offensive player for us? Mm, Farah. Fawn. 
She Fawn has to play. Uh, she or not has to I'd play, but Meeks she, for me. I will not go against Meeks. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go <laughs> against Meeks either. But yeah, um, during WMSL, like it's it's Fawn for me. She's got a lot of sh- longer strides, <laughs> harder to guard for me. I, but yeah, if Meek one's always on my team, so I was I was really really happy to see Fawn get the C. Yeah, yeah. I, I had the privilege of coaching Fawn when she was just little. Because yeah. there was no girls' team, she had to play with the boys. Yeah, mm-hmm. hardest hitter on the team. She was. <laughs> yeah. She was. Yeah. Who has the hardest shot on the team? Um, Tristan has yeah. a great shot, Tristan. but when I talked to Gibby, she would say Beanie. Beanie. Yeah, she's our defensive girl. And one of our goalies told us like that she has the hardest shot. <laughs> Who's got all the dangles? Uh, I would Farah. say Farah. Farah. Yeah. I was gonna say she's one scored five. Yeah, diving, yeah. crease goals. Saw some of them it's... dangles, mid air even. Yeah, yeah. And uh, who would you say is the heart and soul of the team? Mm. Well, I think we all are. Uh, yeah, I think. <laughs> I would say. Yeah, uh, I think all of us together, like we just, you know, I don't know. Was there any moments, like, um, any surreal moments maybe after a game or before a game or, like, just any moments um, at all throughout the tournament where you're like, oh, I can't believe we're actually getting to do this or, like, oh, like, this game went very well or like, or even, like, it went bad. Like, just something that was surreal that was just, like, you kind of, like, it was just one of those moments. For me, it was opening ceremonies, going, walking in with all the other, you know, countries and, Everything that that for me was like, wow, we're here, and you know, I mean, we come walking in and everybody's cheering for us. It's it's a that it was a great feeling for me, definitely. And then like when you're out there, like who like uh, like I know you guys got like uh, family members who obviously like play lacrosse and instilled this game into you. But who's like the first person that comes to mind when you're like, oh, like I would just, I'm glad that I got to do it for this person. For me, it would be my little sister, Beck. Um, she passed away a few years ago. Um, I wore her number 66 at the tournament. So for me, she's she's my person that like I was playing for. Yeah. She used to she hit hard. I watched her play. Yeah. <laughs> she hit hard. She did. Yeah, and she could score goals. Mm-hmm. I would say she was probably one of the best players before she passed. Uh, all around great player. Um, I never see somebody like smile like she does when she played, you know, hitting whatever. <laughs> she could dangle, like yeah. penalty kill, like no other. Like she had hands, she had a great shot. So like for me, like um, she's the reason why I kept playing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who is um who who are some of the upcoming players that maybe didn't make it this year, but you're like yo next year, like or the next t- next uh, next tryouts, they're definitely gonna be there, and you definitely gotta look out for them. Um, all the young girls, um, Reese, she, Shaguaja, she came up with us, but was, um, an alternate come tournament time. She's, she's going to be a great player. Um, she's another She was like one of our non-passport players and we were only allowed so many, but she's definitely a young one that's going to come up. She's really good. Yeah, Talis Tarbell, I think she was getting scouted while we were out there. Um I just feel like all, all those young girls like I feel like them coming up in 4 years, I definitely see a gold for them. Do you have your medals with you? They were asking they're like should we wear them? Should we wear them? <laughs> we do. <laughs> okay. I seen um uh which we call it, um, Florida Panthers got their rings for the uh, Stanley Cup. So I seen Brandon, had, I didn't see his ring, but I seen the pictures of them. Mm-hmm. Pretty epic. Those are pretty epic too, though. Rose gold, the new gold. <laughs> new favorite color. Yeah. <laughs> Something that uh, when I was with the Team Iroquois Minor Program, uh, one of our players got interviewed after the bronze game. And they said, how do you feel about winning bronze? He goes, I feel great because you have to win to get bronze. You have to lose to get silver. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. That's heavy. Uh, drop that now. I know, right? Pretty fancy. I like the logo, too. 
That's the first ever medal given out at Women's Worlds. Oh, now your fingerprints are all over. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> all my resi hands. <laughs> so what's uh, what's uh, what's uh, what's coming up next for you guys? Like, obviously, you're not hanging up the sticks anytime soon. I know you said that you wanted to eventually start coaching. <laughs> well, I don't know. I might be hanging up my stick. Oh, <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> I'll load on a good note, like Jason told me. Now you can re- retire on a good note. <laughs> well, well, this is going to be seen worldwide. You're going to get a lot of people saying, not yet. <laughs> well, I'm pretty proud of Stace. You know, she's she, she's the oldest on the team. Um, she's a grandma. <laughs> you know, she got four kids, and, and um, she set the bar high, you know what I mean? So, like, if this is her last shot, I'm really glad that I got to do it with her. Um, for me... Um, I was the second oldest, so I'm just like, um, I don't know if there's much more for me after this. I think that I'll come back one more year with the attack, and then I would like to coach. Right now, I'm coaching the Winter League for the girls. Um, For me, I get that same feeling as playing, you know, that good medicine to see those girls go out there and and, um, do what you like. You're showing them and you're teaching them, so for me, that's probably my next goal. What about like even like um, what about like a teaching and a culture aspect of lacrosse? Like I, I notice a lot of times, or not a lot of times, but like um, lately on our Instagram, a lot of people have been reaching out and asking, say, "Hey, like Craig's Game Podcast, come talk about lacrosse." Like, would you want to be? Would you want to do something like that? Like go go out to schools and go promote lacrosse, different things like that for other um, women. Uh, I have been asked to go to schools. Um... This we don't do many interviews, so it's all new to us. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's something we'd have to get over and le- try to get out there and do that. I would like to just help other young girls or you know whoever's coming up that you know they have some place to go. I think that the ILA was going to give us like a wall for the attack, and then I I thought that would be awesome for little girls to see that. You know what I mean? Like if they, they want to start playing or whatever like that. And, it would be good for them to see, like, it's not just minor. You can keep going. And now you have worlds. Like, it's it's big. It's big for us. Yeah, it's like literally a whole new door opened up for, like, this whole community because they're just like, oh, I've never seen that before. You inspired a whole nother generation to be like, no, I want to take this further than what has gone before. Mm-hmm. And I just want to help those girls, like, you know, Jason and Randy and Matt and, like, we had Cheyenne and Mary, um, a whole team showing us and teaching us and I just want to like be able to give that to the younger generation it's not an easy task for sure and the older you are the harder you have to work but um just showing these girls that it takes work that you know it's not just um playing lacrosse it's working out it's eating right it's being mentally prepared for for what you have to go through, what your body has to go through, and how to take care of your body as an athlete. You know, the ice baths, the, you know, the things that we had to do um, mm-hmm. out there, the Norma Techs, you got to put them on your legs, you know what I mean? We just, we, um, it was a big learning experience for, for us. Yeah. It was, like, yeah, like all around good learning experience. Like we learned a lot of new stuff. Like I've been playing for like five years, box lacrosse, and it's just like, wow, like, just eye-opening I guess like just like the different things I've learned what about like even on like a mental and emotional aspect like I'm sure the camaraderie of like being able or uh, like going to lacrosse getting out all this I don't know it's like you're if you had a bad day that day you get to go out there and you get to like talk about it before because you're you're in the dressing room you're laughing with your girls you're playing music you're getting ready to go play lacrosse and you get out there you you know you get all that anger out and then you get to go home to your family and all that stuff like, um, what's, like, some advice that you would give to some of the younger generation to keep going with lacrosse and to, like, let them know that, like, there's other way, there's other outlets to get, um, like, I don't want to say anger, but, like, other outlets out there to get your feelings out there, I guess, instead of just having to, you know, say well, something. Because, like, on this, on this podcast, like, that's what we always talk about. It's like, yeah, we get upset, go play lacrosse. <laughs> well, for me, it's like you... You kind of just forget everything once you step on the floor. You know, whatever you were upset about or if you weren't feeling well, you had a headache, whatever. As soon as you're with 
your your girls are your teammates you know what I mean you kind of just forget about it all and then you kind of just feel good afterwards that's that good medicine you know that you talk Mm -hmm. about like um after a game or practice or even just watching a game you know that's that's the way I feel anyways and I feel that like the younger girls um when I watch them, you know, you can tell they have a lot of aggression. If somebody's hitting them, they turn and hit them back. And you're like, okay, well, well, that's part of the game. You know what I mean? So, like, I kind of just want to share that with them and be like, okay, you can you can take a hit, but you can give a hit too. You know what I mean? But in a clean way, not just turning around and <laughs> hitting somebody that hit you, you know. But I, I would just hope that they stick with it because it's hard for girls, young girls, to stick with the sport. Uh, any kind of sport to be honest so I feel like lacrosse is probably one of the best things like you said you get to go out there and hit somebody you know mm-hmm. so yeah you have all that anger and aggression just go out there hit somebody throw a ball around you know and then even like uh scoring a goal brings up the self-esteem mm-hmm. things like that man it's medicine <laughs> and this leads me to one of my questions that I've been waiting to ask and I, I told you prior to the interview um what i was going to be asking so um i wanted to know was there any like stigmas um that stopped you from playing lacrosse like maybe something like hey you shouldn't be touching a wooden lacrosse stick or things like that was there any like anything like that growing up and then um yeah like what how did you deal with it or did you just be like no i'm gonna play um when i first started i played with a plastic stick just to get used to it but when i After those two years, I was given a wooden stick when my sister passed away. Um, My Uncle Mal made my stick for me. Um, I had a lot of people come up to me and tell me that I shouldn't be playing with a wooden stick, that I shouldn't be touching it, you know, um, or even just girls being like, um, like, I was never allowed, like, my dad would never, and I just, like, I would let them say their piece, I would let them, you know, share whatever they wanted with me, but I just said, um, the stick was made for me, it's my medicine, and I don't play in a medicine game with it, um, so I was the first girl to play with a wooden stick in the, in the women's league. And then, like, um, what was the perception of it, like, like, you did, there, there were people saying stuff, but, like, what about our, even like the coaches, your teammates? Did you feel like you had to explain yourself every single time? Um, no, because my teammates knew back, you know, some of them played with her before. And I think the significance of my stick kind of just like nobody really said anything. Well, to me anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, and like I said, it was my medicine. I just hung it up last year. And because in like or two years ago, the winter league, you can't use a wooden stick. Uh, I still used a wooden shaft, but in this tournament in the Worlds, you couldn't use either. So I had to go to the plastic stick. But for me, like I said, it was it was my medicine. It was made for me, and it wasn't um, supposed to be just a wall hanger. You know, my uncle wanted me to play with it. And it's, it's, it's harder. It's not like, like you really have to create like that relationship with your stick. And like it's it's like alive right like Mm -hmm. for me anyways it was it was really hard transitioning to the plastic and then going back to the wooden one come summertime but when I used it and I scored a goal with it like there was no better feeling you know you have people staring at you like oh wow she just used a wooden stick and I'm like yeah I just did you know (laughs) what I mean so it was a great feeling for me anyways did other teams complain that you were out there with a wooden stick I I would get penalties. <laughs> not, Surprise. I'm not trying uh, trying to hurt anybody, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? That's just my style of play. Like, I was never out there to try to hurt somebody just because of my stick. I just love my stick. Like, mm-hmm. that's just how but I that, felt. That's across the board. As soon as somebody's out there with a wooden stick, people automatically assume. Yeah. And then the penalties start coming. Yeah. I, when, when I started playing as a kid, there was no plastic sticks at all. Mm-hmm. Yet there's there was less injuries back then than there is now using plastic. Right. I don't get it. What about that out there, <clears throat> even in the tournament? Um, like I know around here, like a lot of people will be like, "Oh yeah, the native players, the indigenous players, they're too rough." Did they even say that about the women too? Were they were they trying to say you yeah. guys were too rough? Yeah. yeah, the refs did in a lot of our games. I think, especially like Miquan, the way she hits girls, like she hits them hard, and mm-hmm. like even in the summer, it's like that. Like if she hits someone too hard, they call a penalty on her, and you're and like, it's what? like a clean hit, but just the way she hits, like 
yeah penalty for hitting too hard i guess i've never heard about heard of that before but like she she definitely um sets the bar high when she goes out there and she she plays the game you know she uses her body and 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 you know i'm just glad i'm on her team and not the one getting run (laughs) over yeah Yeah, meek one has come out and practice i had a junior squad i was coaching and she came out no pads (laughs) and practiced with us and i kept telling them she's gonna hurt you Mm -hmm. yeah meek Meek one's she's a beast I have an interesting question. What's some of the like? Uh, how, how how do you guys chirp on the floor? Because like I don't know. I've been I've been on I've been on the bench and like Riverman or something like that. You'll hear someone be like, "Oh, I'm, I'm gonna f you up," or just call, call them some type of name or something like that. But like, I, how do you guys I, chirping I, someone or is no chirping? I always imagine it's probably the same. Is it? I don't know. Alicia. What's up, what's <laughs> Alicia can what, answer what, that one. She's yeah, good at like, it. What, what are you guys saying to try to get on someone nervous over uh, there? Well, me and Dana Doe, we had some words on uh, Team Canada. I um, got her on the hands, and she was like, oh, look at the score. And Well, she plays it up, right? So I, I chop and pop, chopped her. She, she oh, you know, so I said, uh, why don't you go play soccer? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I play it up in soccer, and, and she's like, look at the scoreboard. And I said, I don't. I don't fucking care <laughs> what the score is. I said, every time you step on that floor, I'm a fucking lay in. Yes. Oh, yeah. There we go. There it is. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. There we go. I, no I chirps, Stace. No chirps at all. No, not me. Come <laughs> on. You must have said something. Just there. fucking send it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a player a couple of years ago, well known guy, NLL, NLL guy. Um, he would walk in the arena, and the whole atmosphere of it, the whole building would change. And we were playing a game. They were trying to grease him because they were trying to get under his skin. He just went walking over to the bench, over to their bench, and he just said, "Don't come out here because it's hazardous to your health, and you're going to get hurt." <laughs> and one of the players asked the ref if, if that was a criminal charge. <laughs> 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 that's how scared they were of this guy. Oh my goodness! Yeah. yeah. So that's well, what you got to do. I had was for Randy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you there. <laughs> I see Randy. I see. I see him in the parking lot at the arena, or in line to get in the game. And the first thing he does is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Randy's good stuff. I like to chirp him. No, he likes to chirp me. Yeah, Randy Chrysler. If, if you didn't know. Oh yeah, well, um, the <laughs> coach of the yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's a good guy though. Mm-hmm. Mouthy, holy jeez, but he's a good guy. Yeah, I just thought that would be interesting. Like, I don't know. Like, oh, are are the women out there just too nice, or are they just going extra? Just like, I'm gonna fuck you up or something like that. I don't know. Like, never that. But if you know somebody says something, I'll say something back. <laughs> yeah. I don't try to be that kind of player, but like Dana Doby, she's kind of got under my skin. <laughs> is she still under your skin, or is it? Did you leave it on the floor? I left it on the floor. But just one of those type of players that, like, you know, field come transition into box and kind of just about the highlight reel Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so what about after the game did any of the uh from any of the teams did they come up and say oh like congratulations Um, well not for making it here but like you guys like are the very first team like couldn't show any women's team so like you know like that's a big deal Did any of the other teams congratulate you I think Mm -hmm. Hong Kong was probably the most like excited to see us um they were just smiling every time we walked by or asking for pictures. The Netherlands too were pretty yeah. pretty uh, nice. Um we we didn't really go up to Canada or USA <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> afterwards, no. but like the other team, like we all handed out like stickers or, you know, pins or whatever you get, like you trade at the end of the game. But And then uh, after our bronze medal game when we came out, the guys teams was in the hallway there because they were getting ready to do the yeah. warm up so they were all giving us the fist bumps when we came running out after our game awesome yeah. it's it i can empathize a little bit with not wanting to have, deal with canada or u.s be, i've never been in to international i've never been on a bench but at the national level I, even even when it was trade night at the end of the tournament all the all the representatives would get together and trade their stuff mm-hmm. nobody wanted team ontario stuff <laughs> nobody Everybody came to Team Iroquois. Mm-hmm. Anything purple, they wanted it. Oh, that was the same. Everybody liked our stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody kind of has the same colors, right? The red, blue, white, mm-hmm. like not too many different colors. So, yeah, we definitely do stand out mm-hmm. then. But, like, we're like, we're the, f- 
we're glad we got a swag. We're not trading it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here's a sticker. This is what we've been waiting for all year. Was yeah. just, this, this, we've been waiting for all this. All the swag. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Someone just comes over, tries to give you a Canadian flag sticker. Like, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> so, Stace, you came home with the first ever bronze medal. Mm-hmm. Lacrosse royalty over here. Sid's won. Lacks God. Sid, Sid has won. Her brother's won. NOL championships, man cups. NCAA yeah, every yeah. every championship you can imagine. This, this whole community, I think, took took the day, day off to watch them win NCAA, mm-hmm. and basically it boiled down to, um, Sid got the ball end of the field, bombed her up one to one player, one player passed to Cody, Cody scored, and that was like double overtime. Yeah, I think yeah. I was there in Boston that yeah, year when and they won. Everybody I knew here took the day off to watch that game on TV, but. Her dad just won another man cup with the Chiefs. So the best Lacro- doorman in the league. Yeah. <laughs> the lacrosse royalty. And remember my grandpa's I, in the um Canadian Lacrosse Hall of Fame, my grandpa Buck. Yeah. See, and my grandpa and Buck played together. And Buck's in C L A and O L A Hall of Fames. My grandpa was never put into the C L A Hall of Fame because of the uh, because of his attitude. Because of his attitude? That's what we were told. I don't know. Is that where you get your attitude from? <laughs> Me? So remember when I told you the story about wanting to win the President's Cup? Yeah. Because my grandfather and his son did it? Yeah. My grandfather's son, my uncle, is her grandfather. Oh, full circle. So lacrosse royalty over there, too. All the all royalties over there. I'm still trying to win something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen. Uh, I, made, uh, I, made, I made a little yeah. funny on Instagram. I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna try out for the can." I saw that. You Someone pays my registration. <laughs> <laughs> Just hurting. Just hurting. Can somebody watching this pay Daya's registration for? Canada? Don't don't pay my registration. I won't do that team any good. Don't pay mine either. Yeah. <laughs> it's never never too late to start. Oh, I think it's always too late for me. Yeah. I Look would. at Carrie Lee, Carrie Lee Vice. Mm-hmm. This is only her second year playing she's, she's, yeah. lacrosse, she's box lacrosse. I yeah. think she's played field, but this is only her second year playing box lacrosse, and she's a beast out there. Mm-hmm. Well, she's good at like every sport yeah, she plays. Yeah, she's a natural <laughs> like, athlete. Yeah. Um, yes, a natural athlete. Team Canada women's softball. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Carrie Lee needs to get on the show. I've known Carrie Lee like all growing up and stuff like that, like JC Hill and uh, way back in the day. Her and her and my, Danny's a good friend of mine. Mm. Uh, her husband. She needs to come on the show uh, at some point. But yeah, like uh, I want to ask uh, one more question, and then um, I'm gonna pass it over to you. But so when you were out there, like. And you were cheering, like I'm assuming you were cheering for the Hood and the Shoney men's team as well, because you're watching them. What did you think of the outcome, and what do you think could have done better so that they could have gotten the gold? Um. Well, that USA game, semifinal game, and they almost had it there. I think um, their defense, I guess, could have. They got it. Got it together after a while but yeah watching their first game against them when they played USA again I thought the defense could have did better <laughs> do you think it was a harder trend like um because you know some of those players were just got on a man cup and then they go yeah. out there and they're playing whereas like um you guys have like more sporadic time in between like games do you feel like that hindered you or helped you um I don't know I think that I kind of think it would be like more hindering than anything because like we didn't really get to play together besides mm-hmm. like the few scrimmages that we had. I think we had one in January or December against yeah. Canada, and like that was basically our only time that we and that wasn't got even our together. like yeah solid team. Then the team wasn't picked yet. You're still just kind of trying out at that point. So I think that them coming off the man cup and playing together some some of them i think that was a bonus for them because that's also they're probably tired tired, right because they've just played all those games for man cup and then they're coming straight to the world cup that's gotta be i know those those days we were out there i don't know i don't know how i was gonna get through (laughs) yeah Yeah, because i was thinking that like you know um of course they had the man cup 
successful. They get out there, they keep the momentum going, but it didn't necessarily keep going. So I was just mm-hmm. wondering, like, uh, like for you guys, because you know, um, you might have like a couple good practices, a couple good games, everything's feeling good, and then that mon- momentum might die because there's so um, much uh, time in between games, between uh, different things going on within the team. Like, do you think that would be better if there was more stuff going on, like throughout the week, so more practices, more training, or having more time to actually play together? Um, for us, we were busy the whole time. I think we only got Wednesday off. So we went out there on a Thursday. We had practice. Uh, Shoot around Friday or no? Yeah. I think, yeah, but we were busy. As soon as games started Saturday, we had games every day where I think the men, they got a day off in between. And then I think we got Wednesday off, and then we were right back at it. So um, for us, I think that that build it our momentum like we got one day rest because normally like when we play WMSL like back then provincials for us we would be playing six games on a weekend and winning the championship you know what I mean so this for us the six seven games one day a game I think that was it was definitely easier but still hard in the in, in the same sense because you're like you're you're playing with everything every night right mm-hmm. so and I'll, I'll kind of more competitive yeah too. did you guys uh get any chance to celebrate with uh, the men's team as well like after or was it kind of just like you guys just, like, had to do your own, thing? Our own yeah, thing yeah we just kind of did our own thing okay yeah. mm-hmm. well i think with the men's team um a lot of those players that uh played for the chiefs they some of them were on different teams like prime example is dane dane smith was on team canada he was the captain so I think they, I think somewhere I had saw that there was thirteen Chiefs playing at the Worlds. There's even one on like Team USA too. Yeah, yeah. So not all of them got to play together out there too, but um, I I can see both sides of the coin. Momentum dips, but at the same time you get time to heal if there's any injuries. Mm-hmm. Those guys were probably good and tired, but they were probably riding a high too. So and we I, had I a, see both the sides. Practice the weekend before we left. We had like the three practices. Mm-hmm. like that weekend before we left. Mm-hmm. So that was good too. And you guys were practicing all over the place too, right? It wasn't yeah. just here. Yeah. You know, we went to um, Akosasni a couple times, Tayandanega a couple yeah. times. Oneida. Uh, Oneida, New York, mm-hmm. Allegheny yeah. here. So, so I got to ask, and then, are you girls going to Lax night? I'm not. No? No. Stays? I'm still undecided. I didn't think I was going to, but I don't know. We Our team, we're putting a team in, like all of us girls on the Haudenosaunee team have a team in there, so we'll see. Well, I think the defending champions are from Ontario. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because we played, we played in there last year. Yeah, they the put BP a, lawyers. Yeah. Yeah, we had a, a teammate on there, like Deanne Patton. She played for them last year, so it was nice to see her get that. Um, but for me, I'm just going to let the young girls go ahead on this one. <laughs> well, um, if you need any guidance, because you said you want to coach eventually, you might as well start getting your coaching certification now if you haven't already. I have my level one. There I have to do my level two yet. Talk to Jason. He's the one who got me my stuff. Yeah. yeah. Stace, ever going to coach? Oh, uh, yeah. I think I've, after this, I think I do want to coach. I never thought I would, but yeah, I think I, I do want to get into it now. Well, Winter League is a great place to start. That's mm-hmm. where a lot of coaches now start it. Yeah. And, I've been and, doing that for maybe three, four years now. And they had offered to help get, get your coaching cards. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's a great avenue. Like I said, I was with the first 10 years. I don't even know what they're, what are they, 15 years now or maybe more that the Winter League's been running? Yeah. And you see a lot of kids that come from everywhere to play in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I had coached a couple of guys playing in Clearview right now who were from Mimico who played Winter League here. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they were, like, you get a lot of kids here. And I, I, there was some that I hadn't seen in 10 years that came up to me at the Man Cup. Oh yeah, <clears throat> and they're they're adults now. Yeah, like they're like in their in their mid twenties. Mm. Like I don't even remember you. We were like <laughs> this big, but yeah. So it's 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 a great experience, great avenue. Jason, his his wife Tracy, 
great folks to help you get all that stuff. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And see if Jason will share the playbook with you. <laughs> he won't even share it with me. <laughs> <laughs> Any last minute shout outs before we get out of here? Um, probably just my family and my friends and the community, you know, they they really um, were behind us this whole time. And I just appreciate all of their support. It's been it's been amazing for me. It's been an amazing experience. So, and if it weren't for them, I don't think that, you know, I could have got through it without them. Um, the same, just like my family, my support, uh, my mom and dad, um, like every my kids. My kids had to look after themselves and look after each other a lot this past year uh, and my mom was there to help them so um, yeah that really meant a lot and my cousin Josh Johnson he really helped me out with like training I think we went to like the athletes farm like personally like and he helped me out so just like so many people have just been like throughout this whole year has been there supporting and I think that goes for like a lot of the girls on the team too. Profit <laughs> yeah they've been we profit for they like, were doing workouts at profit twice mm -hmm. a day um so that that really helped too and like she said you know my husband my kids with profit with paul yeah yeah he's ruthless that guy <laughs> yeah yeah it was like trish we had yeah trish. there paul did the 6 a.m's which is what i went to like mostly so we did 6 a.m. Tuesday and Thursday, 6 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday. So 6 a.m., 6 p.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays. And Paul mm -hmm. had the morning, and then Trish would do the evenings. The evenings, yeah. So we did that for, I think we started in October or November. We had that. we had to tell the Rivermen players when Paul wasn't coming and then trick them. Because if so they, they, knew, he was, they, if they knew he was there, they'd show up late. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I missed Paul. Darn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's a great guy. He he, a lot of hard workouts. Mm -hmm. uh, even in the beginning, the um, the tryouts mm -hmm. when he would come in and put us through, kind of like the Rivermen. The Rivermen workout, like that workout before practice even started, you know. And then you're like dying, and then okay, now you gotta play hard, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, he's definitely a great coach in that aspect. Great trainer. Yeah, he yeah. is. He is. A lot of people need to take advantage of opportunities like that. Like we were Monday nights with Paul preseason, and then he was at our practices Wednesdays. And um, a lot of players would, would show up and go through it. Some wouldn't. I get it. Some have work commitments and stuff, but um, take advantage. Yeah. If there's mm -hmm. any advice you can give to anybody, take advantage of stuff like that. Yeah, because we were grateful, like um, the girls from Six Nations or like that even drove in, you know, to work out with him. So... But me personally, I was always working out the ILA, like at the Leroy Jameson Fitness Center. I work there, so <laughs> that's where a lot of my workouts happened. Um, shout out to Bow Hunter Brothers for their salads and shakes that kept me going all through the no, season. No chicken wrap. Oh, yeah, the chicken wrap. The chicken wrap factory. I I Come did on. salads. <laughs> um, also, we've got to mention uh, Kevin Martin too. He let us come out right. and scrimmage the yeah. Masters the teams masters. probably so for the last three months or so. Right. So he invited us, invited us out, and we played against them. Mm -hmm. Scrimmaged. Mm -hmm. We got it's pretty chippy there a few <laughs> times with them, and uh, I go and uh, I'd go and watch them play and uh, be like, "What are you guys doing out there?" I said. Kevin, you need to tell your guys, act like they're playing us. <laughs> act like they're scrimmaging us because I think they play a little bit harder. <laughs> well, yeah. that's even something that, you know, might be possible for us in the future to have a women's, like, you know, women's masters. masters like that. It's like, you know, just not really. I mm -hmm. think it would be chippier. I don't know. I think it would. I be. think a lot of girls would come out because they don't want the physicality anymore, but they still want to have their sticks in their hands and get a run in. So then, why don't you get it started? I, I think that's something I might. It's out do. there. <laughs> it's out there. By tomorrow, it'll be worldwide. When she's <laughs> done playing. Yeah, when I'm done playing, maybe that's There's something. There's a meeting I can going on right on. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like meeting started at six o'clock. <laughs> They're probably still Hit reading up, last Alicia, year's minutes. If you're interested <laughs> in the um, women's masters. No, for real, like. It's out there. It'll be out there. So your your social media is probably going to blow up. We need a sponsor for floor time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. all, all of you guys, make sure they want a sponsor. 
<laughs> Daya does too for his yeah. registration. Yeah. Oh no no no. no. <laughs> Ain't nobody need me on the floor. Actually, what no. You, I was on the floor with the Warriors. Why don't uh, you be a ref? A, I don't be no fucking ref. Come on, you think you'd be a great ref? <laughs> I would be a horrible ref. I would say scrap and get it over with, <laughs> and then just stand there and be like, "Are you guys done? Cool, and let's move on." And then we would finish the game, and then it'd be great. Okay, so what's wrong with that? I don't know. It's illegal. I'm pretty sure. Something like the that. OLA will make it illegal. <laughs> OLA will make everything illegal. You said it. I didn't. <laughs> all righty. All right, guys. That was uh, the Creators Game, episode 14. And uh, thank you guys all for coming on the show. Yeah. Thanks for, Thanks having, for us. having us.